this is the opening lecture that I was uh, giving in uh, Sigma Camp in 2017. And it was devoted to exactly this subject, to CRISPR-Cas9. And during that lecture, I told uh, that uh, this technology will be, this, this discovery uh, will be devoted, will be awarded, uh, Nobel Prize will be awarded for the discovery. And that happened this month. So uh, why it was so important and why, uh, why the Nobel Prize was, uh, and, and why, why, why it is, was obvious to me and to many other people that the Nobel Prize will be awarded for this discovery. Mm, that's what I was, I'm going to explain today. Uh, if you have any question during the lecture, you are more than welcome to uh, ask so don't hesitate to ask uh, uh, right uh, at any moment. Uh, so what this uh, discovery is about? Mm, this discovery is simply speaking, this discovery allows us to cut uh, genomic DNA of in a living, directly in a living cell and introduce uh, Mm, any modification, uh, al almost arbitrary modification into this DNA. You can insert some, I don't know, segment of DNA. You can just replace one letter. You have, we can, we can do virtually whatever we want. Mm, and uh, I, uh, I deliberately did not modify my presentation. So I, uh, that is why the order of slide is a little bit different. So, but I, I, I modify the sequence of uh, this presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, this was the Sigma camp Sigma camp, uh, 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 let's say new, uh, my presentation. how do I do my presentation in this, uh, here, uh, this is, this was accidentally the uh, uh, t-shirt design of Sigma camp 17. And in, in the in, in, in that year, we kind of emphasized the similarity between uh, scientists who were looking at stars and uh, at uh, scientists uh, tiny uh, objects in microscope. And there is a, a there is a I'm sorry there is some background noise. Uh, someone please tune. Tune that, uh, tune yourself. Okay, thanks. Mm. And what is the similarity between these two, uh, these two scientists? Uh, one important similarity is that they both kind of watching at uh, the objects uh, from distance, then can, can monitor them, They're, but they can hardly affect them. Uh, astronomers cannot do anything with stars. They just uh, take a can they, they just take a picture, and uh, ironically, uh, almost the same situation was with the scientists who studied uh, human genome or genomic uh, genome in general. They were able uh, to see it, able to read it, but they were almost incapable of doing anything with it. Uh, uh, and this is especially interesting. And why, why does it, did it happen? Uh, our capability of seeing something uh, in the genome were growing uh, with uh, enormous speed. One of the most <coughs> uh, clear demonstrations 
of uh, human uh, progress uh, is uh, so-called Moore's law, which says that uh, computation capabilities, uh, computational capabilities uh, grows uh, approximately, uh, approximately double uh, uh, in every two years. So the growth was exponential. And if we do the same plot <coughs> in a logarithmic scale, uh, that would look like this. Uh, and this is uh, how the size of a single element in microchip uh, decreases, which is a pro uh, means uh, essentially the same. And how uh, cheaper uh, computers becomes per one unit, per one uh, element in the chip. And this is a logarithmical scale. So this mark from that and that this mark and this mark uh, differ by uh, 10 times. So that's not just a linear growth, that's exponential growth of our technical capabilities. And that is usually uh, uh, considered kind of a golden standard demonstration, dem demonstrating our ability to, to increase our technological potential. But this is another plot. So this is the same plot. That's a Moore's law. And this is our, uh, the, the cost of DNA sequencing per one base. So that means starting from 2008, our capability of reading genome uh, grows so much faster than even compu computer technologies that uh, we can read virtually anything quite easily for minimal price. I remember when I was a graduate student, I was participating in a huge project, uh, international project, human, uh, human genome project. Uh, and Several countries uh, and several corporations, uh, they uh, combined their efforts to read a sequence, a DNA sequence of one person, just one individual, one human. And uh, that took several billion dollars and uh, about 10 years. Now we can do the same for as, as, uh, as, as little as a few thousand dollars and uh, it takes, uh, I even don't know about the present situation, but a few years ago it uh, took literally a week or so. So we know everything. Uh, we can read everything in the human genome. But first we don't, completely understand what all of that, what that all of that mean, because we know letters, we can read every nucleotide in the genome, but uh, that's a kind of a, an annotated book with uh, no chapters, no, uh, no sequential uh, story which is told. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what all these letters mean, and we don't know which sequence, which part of the genome tells about, uh, describes some gene, or which is which one is just an insert, which one is just the garbage. Uh, that's very hard to figure out, and that is why uh, bioinformatics is growing so rapidly in attempt to interpret uh, all of that. And the second, uh, the most uh, important part of this in science is experimentation. So in that case, uh, that um, what does it mean? You take a genome, you change something, and you look uh, what changes does it cause uh, uh, in the phenotype? Uh, does it, is it lethal or it is beneficial? And uh, so on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we were not able to do that um, until recently. Uh, more uh, precisely, 
We were capable of doing that, but that required enormous effort. And to make just a single change, we need to design a special protein that uh, would do just one change, very specialized, special, specialized protein. And that was not, uh, that was very, very, very difficult. Mm. That's the first uh, aspect. The second aspect is uh, sometimes uh, our own DNA breaks. And if that happens in germ cells, for example, we have a, a genetic, we may have a genetic disease. Uh, and these diseases may be caused by just a, a substitution of one nucleotide in your genome. But that substitution may create huge problems uh, and even maybe little. Again, the solution seems simple. Just replace this small nucleotide in the genome and everything is fine. However, we had no tool to do that. Mm. Sometimes you even don't, don't need to replace all, uh, all these, uh, fix all these errors in each cell in our, our organism. In some diseases, it is sufficient just to fix uh, this uh, damage in, in a certain tissue or in uh, a certain fraction of cells in this tissue or this organ. And that would save life, that would make life quality of this individual much, much better. But again, we had no opportunity to do that. Now, mm, discovery of this, uh, of, of CRISPR-Cas9, uh, it was, mm, it's not an uh, immediate solution, but it opens an opportunity to develop technologies uh, in each particular case to fix many, many, many problems. So using CRISPR-Cas9, we can first understand uh, how our genome works better uh, by making some targeted uh, modification in the genome and seeing how, which changes do it cause, do they cause in our phenotype and how our organism develops differently. Uh, works differently. Mm. And second, uh, using this knowledge, uh, using the data about uh, mutations that are uh, little or uh, harmful, we can fix them. And uh, that is a cure for many, many, many genetic diseases. And the third, but this is more kind of uh, science fiction, uh, we can uh, modify our own organism. For example, I don't know. It is not, uh, the possibilities cannot be ruled out that if uh, in, in some remote future, parents want uh, their child to have blue eyes, then may kind of order such a modification. Uh, uh, I don't know how legal it will be, but technically it may be quite possible. Uh, so, uh, how all of that, uh, uh, how all of that work, how this technology works? Mm. This technology has uh, two uh, components. Uh, that is why it is called CRISPR, CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR is one component and, uh, and, uh, Cas9 is another. CRISPR is the uh, specific RNA, uh, ribonucleotide, uh, 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 <laughs> RNA. Uh, and uh, Cas9 is a specific protein. Together, they, uh, let me show you. Mm. Uh, what they do, uh, so this is, uh, can you see my cursor? Uh, if you can, uh, okay. 
Yes, I can see your cursor. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want, you may use your reaction tools. Do you see it? Like this. Uh, actually, if you want to ask, uh, if you want, uh, there, are, there are many different ways to show your reactions. So if you don't want to say something, don't, don't want to unmute yourself, just do this or, or hey, listen, I need, I have a question and so on. Uh, okay, so going back to this story. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is a kind of, uh, what is called CRISPR. It's not exactly CRISPR, but that is a, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm talking about a technology. So that may be that in, in technology, in this technology, this called CRISPR. Mm. And uh, Cas9, what it is. Uh, so this CRISPR is RNA. So RNA is capable of making a double helix with a complementary DNA. And so this is the DNA of uh, uh, our, uh, our genome. So normally it is, uh, it forms the base uh, uh, double helix. So nucleotides and means nucleotides, any nucleotide, A, B, uh, A, C, A, C, G, T. Uh, and uh, another N is a complementary, uh, the nucleotide complementary to this one. So the norm, this is a normal helix. Uh, in, uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the moment when uh, the cleavage occur, uh, the configuration is, uh, is as shown on, on this picture. So this DNA is partially molten. So it is like this. Uh, so uh, this double helix is uh, open, so it's, uh, th there is no base pair anymore. Instead, one strand, this strand, forms a double helix with this RNA. And the formation of a fully uh, complementary double helix means uh, CRISPR came to the right place. So. This is the recognition of uh, the, the, the formation of this double helix means uh, this particular sequence has been recognized by CRISPR. And this, uh, this shape uh, schematically shows uh, Cas9. Cas9 is a protein. Normally this protein is sitting, actually there are several copies of uh, one protein which are sitting on CRISPR on the CRISPR RNA, and they expose this segment outside. And when uh, this segment sticks to uh, genomic DNA, this complex forms. So uh, when this complex uh, that includes the genomic RNA, uh, CRISPR, uh, genomic DNA, CRISPR RNA, which is sitting uh, on the genomic uh, DNA, and Cas9, which, which is bound to CRISPR RNA. So when this complex has uh, fully formed, that is a signal for Cas9 to start cleavage. At that moment, uh, it cleaves uh, DNA here and here. And after that, uh, after that, uh, this complex uh, dissociates and uh, Cas9 and CRISPR leaves and we have a double strand break. This is a key point uh, in this technology uh, because it seems the simplest part, but in reality, it is the, uh, the most important part because the rest can be done by our cells, uh, our cells because they have, we have a mechanism uh, that uh, do uh, uh, the rest of the job. Mm, why? Uh, the reason is uh, because uh, uh, we have a, a cellular mechanism, actually two cellular mechanisms 
which are responsible for uh, healing uh, double strand breaks. Because DNA, uh, it is, it is uh, not unusual when uh, DNA have double strand breaks. Normally when, for example, you go for CAT scan uh, and uh, after this procedure, uh, almost every cell, I mean, uh, one half of uh, cells in your uh, body have at least one uh, DNA break, uh, double strand DNA break. And that, but that is not a big problem because we have a mechanism that fix it. It works uh, in two ways. So if we uh, see, uh, if we represent DNA like that below, which is a quite correct description because usually DNA is, a, uh, is very, very untangled strand. So what happens when double strand uh, break occurs? Uh, first of all, that is signal, signal alarm signal to the cell. Uh, because in the normal cell, it, it is not supposed to be open, uh, in open ends, uh, just uh, broken ends in DNA. Because our chromosomes are protected by specific, special structures called telomeres. And if uh, there is just a, a single unprotected DNA end in a cell, that means something wrong happened. Either our own DNA was damaged or some virus came or whatever. That is something which we need uh, to fix. The first mechanism to fix it is uh, so-called non-homologous, homologous end joining. So a special protein comes here and uh, uh, catches it like this. It is really big, so that's a very, adequ uh, very adequate uh, representation. So it looks like this. The second protein, second copy of the same protein comes to here. And uh, then the, they start to travel uh, due to thermal fluctuation, they start to travel in cytoplasm and uh, in the nucleus until they stick together. And after that, specific mechanism starts, which uh, recombines the end and everything is fine. But uh, that is a very, very um, uh, important and active mechanism in our cells. But what if, what if more than one double strand break occurred? That means uh, the DNA may be linked incorrectly. Uh, to fix that, to overcome this problem, another mechanism exists uh, called uh, homologous recombination. Uh, what does it mean? Homologous recombination is a mechanism. Uh, uh, it relies on the fact that there are homologous structures in our body, uh, in, in our cell, uh, so homologous sequences in our cell. First, uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, several uh, the, 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 the double set of chromosomes which means each pair of chromosomes have the same or uh, almost the same genes. That means we have at least two copies of the same sequence in our genome. Uh, that means we can use one sequence as a template to fix uh, the break in another homologous sequence. Uh, how it works? It works like this. So, these are this and that are two. Ah, no, no, sorry. This is a, a segment in a chromosome which uh, broken, uh, it broke accidentally. Uh, and what happens next? <clears throat> a special enzyme comes that starts chewing one out of two strands to make <coughs> one strand overhang. And the same is done with the second end. So one strand becomes uh, cleaved and so we have another overhang. Now uh, the uh, same machinery finds uh, 
the single second copy of the same sequence in the second chromosome, this one, the blue, uh, and melts it here. So it's, uh, this DNA, DNA strand opens, uh, DNA double helix opens here. And now we see, uh, what do we hear? We see we have one single strand, a segment of one single strand and uh, another single strand, and they are complementary to these uh, sequences. So this DNA makes a double helix, a short double helix with this uh, DNA. So uh, now the DNA can, uh, the, the synthesis of new DNA strand can can start using uh, enzymes called the DNA polymerases, the same enzymes that are responsible for copying of DNA during cell division. So uh, this DNA grows and, uh, and the lacking segment is uh, restored. Now, the same happens to that DNA. So this DNA also synthesized. And now we have this red segment. Uh, and and uh, uh, when this process uh, ends, uh, this uh, blue DNA, dark blue DNA uh, leaves and we have this. So these segments of DNA are paired and there are gaps here and there. But these are single strand gaps, which are very easy to fix and our cells have a mechanism to fix them. That is how homologous recombination works. At this point, I think if my explanation was not uh, clear enough, uh, please ask your questions. Was it clear? Guys, show your reactions. And I, I want you to understand, this is mechanism which is not related to CRISPR-Cas9. This is a universal mechanism which is constantly working in our cells. This mechanism is responsible for uh, fixing DNA damages. And these DNA damages is not something terrible, something, uh, oh, I have a DNA da damage in my cell, I'm gonna die. It's not, uh, it's not true. DNA damages are a usual normal process uh, that happens with some low but constant frequency. And uh, our organism have, must have mechanism for fixing them. The problems may occur when there are too many DNA damages or when our mechanism of DNA damage fixing uh, bro breaks. And that's a problem, but uh, just the DNA damage is, is not, is it, that's quite okay. Now, uh, imagine a situation when uh, DNA, the DNA damage occurs but instead of, uh, but in addition to, uh, instead of the second homologous sequence in another chromosome, uh, we bring some new sequence, which is also homologous to uh, that, that part, that part of DNA affected by CRISPR-Cas9. What happens? the uh, homologous recombination mechanism starts to work. And uh, in, the, in the same way, a new sequence is introduced, but it is not the sequence that uh, from the second chromosome. That's a sequence from the new DNA which we brought to the cell along with the CRISPR-Cas9. And what the, what the, the result of this uh, process uh, will be? We introduce a new sequence. So instead of, uh, instead of uh, in that gap, we introduce a new sequence or we just reproduce the same sequence, but with one 
uh, replacement, one nucleotide replacement, two nucleotide replacements, whatever. Yes, it may be very small. It may be really big, extra thousand nucleotides. Um, but that will be a modification. So uh, to, uh, to summarize how it works, CRISPR-Cas9 do, uh, does just this very, oh, this very first step. The rest is done by our cell, the mechanism that already exists in our cell. However, if we present, if we uh, add uh, extra DNA with the, G, with the new modification we would like to introduce, we kind of uh, uh, kind of cheating, and the mechanism, this mechanism recognizes this sequence as its own DNA, and introduces the sequence encoded here into our genome in this position, at the position where uh, CRISPR-Cas9 will cut uh, DNA. That is, in summary, how this works. Again, you have a great opportunity to ask questions because I doubt, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm pretty sure there are many, many lectures on YouTube on that account, but uh, the difference between those lectures and this one is that you can ask questions. So don't miss this opportunity. Okay. Ah, yeah, I see. What are crisp cassettes? Yeah, and that is a that's a good the uh, uh, good question because uh, that's the directly uh, moves uh, that's a, a kind of helps us to to move to the second second part of the question. Of the of the story of the lecture, because I dis, I I told about uh, the technology, and uh, frankly speaking, I expected when I was given the lecture in two thousand and seventeen, I, I I expected the Nobel Prize will be awarded for both technology and the discovery of CRISPR. Unfortunately, they prefer to give a prize for technology only. Uh, because uh, the, first, uh, the, the first time when technology was reported, it was 2012, when they uh, introduced modification into a genome. But where did they, where did they take this CRISPR-Cas9? They did not invented CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR-Cas9 is the natural system discovered in uh, bacteria. And this system is their natural immune system. Similar to, uh, uh, similar to uh, earlier discovery of uh, um, restriction enzymes which gave a start to genetic engineering that happened uh, in late 60s. And that thanks to that, we have a genetic engineering. Uh, this is also the, the, immune, the immune system of uh, bacteria. So most restriction enzymes, which we know for several decades, and CRISPR are the main uh, bacteria are fighting against their uh, viruses, uh, phages. And this discovery was done not by uh, the person who got the Nobel Prize. It was done by uh, Spanish uh, uh, bioinformatic uh, scientist uh, Mujica, uh, who found, uh, who studied genome of bacteria and found uh, strange repeats in their, oh. 
let me find my uh, strange repeats in the uh, in in the genome. Here, this is the original uh, uh, the slide from the original paper in uh, published in 1995, and he found interesting repeats of that uh, this, and they are. Uh, they are clustered uh, regular, interspaced, uh, palindromic repeats. Uh, what does it mean? They are, they go, uh, they do not appear randomly in uh, genome. They are found close to each other. So this is a uh, sequence uh, of, of the genome, how it is represented <coughs> in a normal database. They usually show 10 nucleotides, gap 10 nucleotides, but that's a single strand, single DNA. So it, uh, it continues here. So that's a, just a single piece of DNA recorded in this way. Mm. And uh, uh, I, uh, we deliberately changed the order to show because the length of so these are uh, insert in between these uh, regular repeats. So this is a variable part. These are uh, a constant part. So and if we align them into single uh, sequence, it will look like this, where uh, a rhombus represents this, and this rectangle represents that. So. These are kind of, uh, these are almost constant. There's not, uh, they are not variable. These are variable. This is again the same. This is something new. This is uh, roughly the same. This is something new. <coughs> so this is what uh, uh, drawn uh, attention of Mojica. And he could not understand what all of that means. But the explanation, uh, the, the origin of these um, repeats became um, evident when he looked at the variable insert. He compared these insert with the inserts with the sequences of uh, different viruses, and he found that each this insert corresponds to some short sequence in some bacterial virus that, uh, uh, or old bacterial virus, and extinct bacterial viruses. And the answer, uh, and, and that immediately gave a clue what all of that is. Uh, what does uh, what what does the rem all of that remind you? If you see a record in some database where some standard sequence of symbol follow is followed by a variable sequence of symbols, a uh, characters, and again a standard sequence variable, standard variable. What does it uh, what what uh, what does it look like? It looks like a database. That is how it is stored in computers. That's a header. Let's explain, for example, warning, oh, wanted. This person is uh, convicted, I mean, suspected to be a criminal. And then, uh, the, 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 then a sequence of symbols or characters, bytes, encodes uh, his picture or her picture or their picture. Okay, maybe they associate. Uh, currently themselves with the different gender. Uh, let's be inclusive. So this is a database. Uh, the, the header tells you, pay attention to that. And the rest is information to what you should pay attention. So again, 
uh, wait. Uh -huh. And this is uh, and this is what what is what's called the CRISPR cassettes. So the storage of uh, information about uh, old uh, and current uh, parasites that infected this particular bacteria. Nicholas, did I answer your question? Nicholas, I, yes? I don't think I was the one who asked the question, sorry. Uh, yeah, sure, sorry, but uh, it looks like uh, someone asked the question, what is the CRISPR cassette? Okay, no problem. Uh, so, but is it clear uh, how CRISPR was discovered? Great. Uh, so this is the old uh, and very reliable immune system. Uh, by, which used by bacteria to fight against viruses. But how does it work? Uh, to uh, understand that, we need to uh, take pay attention at this PR, palindromic repeats. These repeats, they not only they, uh, because uh, uh, Proteins, they cannot read uh, DNA. They cannot read uh, uh, just the ordinary, ordinary DNA or ordinary RNA uh, because proteins are relatively small and DNA is, uh, or RNA is big. So if, I, uh, if this is DNA, then the protein, okay. If this is DNA, then the protein is, is, is normal protein or average protein is as big as this. So it can cover 10, uh, 10 12 nucleotides, not more. And it, can, uh, it cannot recognize the long motif. Uh, if we consider this is just a single strand, single strand of RNA, and the sequence is like, like uh, similar to what uh, I show uh, on, on this slide. Uh, so G, C, G, C, and here C, G, C, G. What, will, what may happen? The, DNA, the RNA strand may fold and form a double helix here. So that will be a hairpin motif. That motif is called stem loop motif or hairpin. This is a very specific, uh, this motif has a very specific shape. And uh, it is different from the shape of a normal, uh, like this. So from the shape of a normal RNA. And that means uh, the nature may develop some specific protein that recognizes this motif, just this motif. So the variable, the, the constant part becomes the kind of a handle where some specialized protein may come and uh, grasp it and bind. And, and this is what happens to that part of the sequence. So it becomes a handle where proteins and hold, hold it. And what about this part? This part is a variable. So it, uh, this protein may use it kind of like a template for recognition of, of the invading genome. How does it happen? Uh, uh, how does, when the bacteria uh, feels something wrong, uh, it feels uh, it is infected by something. It uh, starts transcription of this cassette. So uh, this DNA becomes a single-stranded RNA. I mean, a, a copy of single-stranded RNA is synthesized. This part folds into the uh, uh, into the hairpin, 
which is uh, but okay we get we get okay we have one uh, one uh, here team the next next repeat what's another here team and the protein we it here that then the second protein second copy of the protein comes and cuts it here and so on so now we have a short segment of the rna bound to one copy of crispr protein and another copies of crispr protein uh, bind to this and they help this RNA to go to, to, to travel in a cell inside a cell to find the sequence which is complementary, a DNA sequence which is complementary to this strand. When they find it, they cleave it here, and the DNA becomes destroyed. But only the, the DNA that belongs to a virus. virus becomes destroyed because uh, the cell is not uh, uh, it has no is how uh, the uh, in cell uh, CRISPR works and what uh, people uh, he just picked up this mechanism took uh, And made uh, the, the let me show you where it is. Uh -huh. She made the DNA mm, that encodes a CRISPR, encodes the sequence which is complementary, which which guides CRISPR to genome. Uh, this uh, part encodes the protein Cas9 because this protein is not uh, it does not ex exist in our own cell. Uh, the cell needs to produce it for everything uh, to work. And this is DNA that encodes uh, the sequence which needs to be modified. Uh, so as a result. Uh, we introduce just DNA into the cell. Cell by itself, uh, it produces needed CRISPR RNA. It produces produces the Cas protein, and it makes a new copy of uh, DNA, of DNA which is needed to fix um, to fill the gap which forms when we cut genomic DNA with the new sequence, with the modified sequence. And that is how it works. Uh, so now we have a time for questions. I, I'm not going to ask questions about uh, problems, exact uh, problems of the months, which are direct directly related to this problem. But I can uh, ask uh, answer questions uh, regarding more kind of ah yes yes ah Vlad it was asked by Vlad yes cassettes uh, is the not just information, it's a database. What's the difference between information and a database? Database is information which is um, kind of organized, regularly organized for easy access. So it is more correctly to say it is a database because it has a variable part which uh, relates to some virus and they have a a uh, constant part which explains what to do with this information. And that is again, that's the mechanism which is found in many, many, many 
if not all bacteria. But nobody knew about that until uh, mid 90s uh, because, I don't know, because only Mujica uh, was smart enough to recognize that these motifs are not just uh, curious repeats which serve to no specific goal. What other questions? Okay, uh, if you have no questions, uh, then good luck with your problem of the month. And uh, you can email me a question if you want, because you know my email. Okay. See you later. Where will the uh, lecture be uploaded? Uh, there is a YouTube channel. Sigma Camp has its own, own YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, 